This review was filmed during the 2023 WGA and SAG After Strikes. Without the labor of the writers and actors currently on strike, the works being covered here wouldn't exist. I fully support both the WGA and SAG after in their fight for fair treatment and compensation against a system that continually denies them such. While a full boycott has not been called for, SAG after has asked that everyone who does media about film and TV refrain from promoting struck content during this time. From what I can tell based on guidelines released, independent reviews do not constitute promotion of work, but as critical assessment of a work of art. Any praise I give to these works should be seen purely as praise for the artists, writers, and actors who created it. If anything, the praise is emphasizing that the writers, actors, and other artists deserve more compensation because they are who make these works possible. Additionally, this video was not made using any studio-provided screeners or materials. Do not support any studios during the strike. If you want to know more information, there are links down in the description for you to follow. Oh boy, was this an episode. Oh boy, was it an episode. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest Minty Reviews, and I am here for the latest episode of Ahsoka, the Star Wars series that is currently going on. This one was episode number six, titled Far, Far Away. And oh boy, was this a really, really interesting and very awesome episode that I am probably not going to be able to talk too much of non-spoilers for because there's a lot of really awesome spoiler things in the episode. So, as I do normally with, the re with these reviews, I'm going to try to do a non-spoiler section first and then a spoiler section afterwards so you guys can get like my general thoughts of the episode first and then I just go into the episode. Now, however, I am also quite tired. It has been a long day, so I am going to attempt, if I can, to keep this review a little shorter than the, than the usual ones. I'm going to try to not ramble as much, even though I am currently rambling as it is. So, let's just get into the review, shall we? So, non-spoiler section here first, non-spoilers here, and let's get into the episode. So, this episode was very, very good. There was a very high bar for the entire series to set after last week's episode. However, I personally don't think that it was trying to beat that, that, beat that bar, because last week's episode was just so mind-blowingly awesome in a lot of different ways, and probably the best episode of Star Wars anything that they've done in quite a while, that I don't think this episode was trying to do that, it was trying to do other things, and it did those other things extremely, extremely well. And one of the things that it definitely did was give us a lot of Sabine. This was a very Sabine-focused episode, along with some Skull and Hati as well. But it was mainly a Sabine-focused episode with the rest of the main crew taking a little bit of a backseat in this one, especially Ahsoka. Ahsoka was in the very beginning of the episode, and then, this is minor spoilers, wasn't in the rest of the episode. So, we got very little bit of Ahsoka. We got a lot of Sabine, though. And the stuff we got for Sabine, very, very good. She got to show up a lot of her acting skills. We got to see a lot more character for Sabine. We got to see her on her own, which was really, really cool. Also, we got to see a lot of just really cool new things in Star Wars, which was just very, very cool to see. Just, just new things, finally. Just actual, legitimate, new things. And some old things, too. We got to see some old things without spoilers or anything. We got to see some cool old things, too, which is like, hey, that's actually pretty cool. So, compared to last week, no. It was it was no way to perform the, the masterpiece that was last week. It wasn't trying to be. It wasn't ever going to be. And that's fine. That is completely fine. But it was great in its own way. Also, Kevin Kiner's score this week, underrated. Still very good. A lot of synth this time in this week's episode. And I like that. I like myself some synth and some in a, in a, in a score. Reminded me a lot of the the Tron um, Tron Legacy theme from Daft Punk. A little bit of some uh, some Blade Runner uh, Blade Runner in there as well. Really good. I liked it. But that's pretty much all I can really say in non spoilers because uh, spoilers are pretty big this time. <laughs> they are pretty big and pretty broad strokes to be honest. So. Let's just end the non-spoiler section there. Let's go into spoilers now. So, spoilers here, everyone. Spoilers. So, in three, two, one. Big Blue is back, baby. So, I made a joke. I made a joke uh, before watching the episode. I was like, man, can't wait for this episode to be a 40-minute long episode of them just being on the ships, traveling to this new galaxy, and just talking. And it kind of was that for the first, like, maybe five-ish, ten-ish ten -ish minutes. And I kind of laughed. I was like, oh, wow, they're actually doing this. They're actually doing the joke. But they didn't. They didn't do that. It was just a little joke that I thought it was really funny that to myself. I popped myself there. But what we actually got in this episode was we made it to the new galaxy. We made it to Palladia, I think is what it's called, Palladia. We're seeing brand new stuff in Star Wars. We are finally seeing 
brand new, never before seen stuff in Star Wars, which is really really cool. And we find out that basically this planet is actually a uh, is actually a Pergo graveyard, <laughs> which is um, interesting to say the least. Very cool visual, very cool visual. It reminded me a lot of Lion King with the uh, elephant graveyard, but whatever. However, what we find out is that Palladia is the ancestral homeworld of the of the which is a dathomir the the dathomiri i believe is what they were originally called and morgan else was like hey i'm coming home basically to the ancestral homeworld of my people it's like oh that's really cool so that means that that entire people that entire culture uh migrated from this original galaxy which is really really cool and when they get to the planet we see a lot of architecture from from the dathomiri from the witches and we actually get some more witches of dathomir or some some dathomiri witches which are very very cool because like hey that means that they're not extinct they're just here we don't know how many are here because they keep saying this planet is a wasteland but we get to see at least three beyond all that i'm going to be skipping through a lot of stuff there's a lot of just kind of walking in this episode to be completely honest a lot of walking a little bit of talking and stuff however we get to the planet they take sabine they they put her in a in a cell basically and then we're just awaiting the return of the man himself and he eventually arrives and we get finally the return of grand admiral thrawn voiced and portrayed by Lars Mikkelsen so the voice is still there from Rebels he looks a, he, he looks all right he looks all right in the blue makeup for, for me personally it's a little bit of just a, a translation thing from animation to live action I think Lars Mikkelsen is doing great as Thrawn I think he's still doing great it's just one of those translation things from like how great he looked in animation to now looking in live action it's one of those things where like eh, there's gonna be a little bit of some leeway here but still it's Thrawn and honestly what matters for Thrawn most is the voice the voice is still there. Lars is doing a little something different with the voice this time compared to Rebels. I think honestly, it's a little it's, it's a little bit different to make it a little less taxing on him since he actually has to act now as well, like physically act rather than just voice act. So I'm fully okay and understandable of him like lessening the voice just a little bit, but it's still the Thrawn voice, and we get Thrawn. And we also get his really really badass like Stormtrooper Legion that kind of have like a like a really interesting kind of like Spartan vibe to them, like a um a Mycedonian like warrior vibe to them, where their armor is kind of like beaten and like patchworked over and like painted like red and black a little bit. Um, his main general Enoch, also Enoch, is a reference to some mythology somewhere. I believe Babylonian mythology, possibly. Don't quote me on that. I might be a little wrong. I am tired tonight. But he has like a golden face mask as well. It's like, damn, these guys are cool. And I really, I'm, I'm a big fan of Stormtrooper costume designs. It might just be because I'm a toy collector of some of various ways. And I have multiple Funko Pops of various Stormtrooper things. But I like Stormtrooper looks. And these have some really cool Stormtrooper looks, I will say. Very, very cool looks. But we get Thrawn. He knows where Ezra is. And he's going to fulfill Valen's promise and is like, yo, Sabine, you want to go find Ezra? Go find him. We're going to give you the intel uh, of where, where we think he is. We're going to give you a, uh, a bat horse called a howler. Those things are cool. We're going to give you weapons back. And then we're going to let you go. Go find him. And of course, being Thrawn, he obviously has ulterior motives here. And the ulterior motives are, yeah, find Ezra for us. And then Valen and Hadi can go there and uh, kill them both. And then we can just leave at the same time. Because Thrawn's whole idea is like, I've been trapped here for however long I've been trapped here. I want to go home. <laughs> I want to go home and I want to fulfill my mission of finishing what the Empire started. I want to become the heir to the Empire. I am going home. So he does not give a damn about Sabine, about Ezra, about Skull, about Hati. He does not give a damn about any of them. He's like, I'm going to pack this ship up and I am going to go home. So understandable so he just sends uh skull and hottie after sabine after a little while to track him whatever and then just like yo deal with them and if we leave you behind sorry you're stuck here now which is a weird thing as well because we get a scene later with skull and hottie following sabine where we get a little bit more of his of his backstory of his history and like why he's doing what he's doing and i have this i have this theory and i think a lot of people have this theory as well at this point but i have this theory that he is trying to rebuild the jedi order but rebuild it in the original way it was presented not what it became in like the republic era and uh, luke's era and everything i think he's trying to build the original jedi order 
as like an actual like religious thing with like power and teaching people the how to use the force and not be beholden to like the light side or the dark side or the teachings of like oh you have to be like self like self chased or whatever you know all that stuff that the that the um republic was teaching that led to anakin becoming vader or anything which is also why ahsoka left i think is what he's doing i think he's trying to rebuild the order in its original way that's why he hasn't been acting like a sith and why he wasn't hasn't been acting like a full jedi but something in between and different and he mentions a little bit of this too because even hottie asks him like do you miss the order and he's like no i don't miss the politics of it i don't miss the strife of it but do miss some stuff about it kind of a thing so it's like okay we're getting a little bit more of him there a little more of him so i don't think he wants to kill sabine anyway or ezra when we get to him i don't think he wants to kill them i think he wants to teach them i think he wants to train them i think he wants to recruit them for this new order which is intriguing i think i think we're going to get an interesting dynamic between him and ahsoka next episode because again we didn't really see ahsoka at all in this episode and then the other big part is obviously sabine was leaving and going to find ezra and well <laughs> we get a couple returns this episode that's all i'm saying we get a couple returns and we finally get iman Esfandi as ezra and he's really good <laughs> He's really, really good at everything. We didn't get too much of him. We got like one main scene with between him and Sabine of them just like catching up and such. But he has that Ezra feel to him. And he feels like an older Ezra. And and he has that feel. So in this episode, we got the return of Big Daddy Thrawn. And we got the return of Ezra, baby. And uh, who my little rebel's heart is so, so happy and so ecstatic about that. Uh, we also got two new creatures for star wars i already mentioned the howler which is like a strange bat wolf dog horse which i love them now they are really cool and we also got these things called like the noti i believe which the best way i can describe them is like if you took jiminy cricket and you mixed him with a turtle and you mixed and you made him an alien in star wars they're like these little like cricket rock creatures that stand on two legs and have like little vests on like little suits and i'm like these things are adorable. I love them. I love them so much. And of course, Ezra befriended them because of course he did. Because he's Ezra. But yeah, we get the return of Ezra, we get the return of Thrawn. It's amazing to see it. It is so, so amazing to see it. And the episode ends with the Grand Witches, basically, the Witch Mothers, uh, saying, oh, hey, there's a... There's another one coming. They're coming on the whales. Um, talking about Ahsoka coming, and then Thrawn basically is like, okay, if you see a whale, uh, kill that thing on sight, because I don't want to deal with this shit today. <laughs> I do not want to deal with this. Um, in a manner of speaking, of course. He did it a lot more eloquently, and a lot more uh, Thrawn-like, of course. But you know what I'm saying here. You know what I'm saying. And that's basically where the episode ended. It ended very interestingly there. Um, I guess I should also say the stuff about Ahsoka at the very beginning. Ahsoka's at the very, very beginning, um, talking to Hu Yang. We get to see the whales in, in the, the hyperspace. Um, talking to Hu Yang, um, uh, and Hu Yang wants to, uh, share some old Jedi stories. And, uh, so Ahsoka just doesn't want to hear him right now. She's like, I don't want to hear him right now. I just kind of want to, like, you know, focus before we get to the planet. Um, and then they start talking about some stuff, and it eventually leads to her being like, okay, you're you're reading into me a little a little much here. I don't like that. So you know, let's actually hear one of those stories. And Hu Yang, in a great little piece of kind of meta Easter egg here, he starts off the story by saying, "A long time ago in a galaxy far far away." It's like ah, he did the crawl. Hu Yang did the crawl. That's funny, but yeah. So that's this episode was awesome. This episode was really really awesome. Not on the same awesome level as last week's episode was for obvious reasons but it was really awesome nonetheless for a lot of really cool reasons we got brand new things introduced into star wars for the first time ever of the howlers and the noti people and haladia and uh, the 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 purgle graveyard we got the the new stormtrooper legion uh, the throngs legion i'm just gonna call them that um enoch as well we got some very cool things that we got the homeworld of the death miri we got some actual night sisters like legitimate night sisters that aren't dead uh we got some really really cool things and then obviously the return 
of Thrawn and the return of Ezra. Very, very cool stuff there that I'm incredibly excited to see what they do in the next episode because the next episode is the penultimate. And with the penultimate, that means they're going to do a lot of really big stuff to set the finale. So what are they going to do? And obviously we're going to get Ahsoka on this planet. So what are they going to do? And it also leads to the question of, well, what did they do to end the series as well? We only got two episodes left. So what are they going to do to the end the series as well? What what are they going to do to bring this forward? And I have a theory. I don't think I'm going to share it until next week, but I have an idea of what they might do. And it's just a theory, just a complete theory, uh, completely out there. Probably not going to do it, but I'll share it next week uh, after next week's episode just to see you know what happens there. But either way, that's going to be my spoiler review of Ahsoka episode 6, Far, Far Away. It was really fun. It was really, really good. Um, and man, we got Thrawn and Ezra back, and they're pretty great. <laughs> they're pretty great. So, with that out of the way, that's the spoiler section. Let me know down in the comments below what do you think about this episode as well, and what do you think they're going to be doing? What do you think they're going to be doing in these last two episodes and then the penultimate, and how do you think it's going to go forward? And also, what do you think about those returns? What do you think about those returns and those new things we saw as well? What do you think about those as well? Let me know those down in the comments below. And if you want to see more from the channel as well, go ahead and first off, leave a like on this video if you like the review. Um, it helps boost the review in the algorithm and also helps my sleepy brain so that you all are liking what I'm doing here. And if you want to see more from the channel, go ahead and subscribe as well. You will be notified of all the videos I upload, all my reviews, all my reactions, all my other things I post whenever I do them eventually. You'll be notified of all of them if you subscribe as well, and it helps the channel grow and helps this community grow as well. And with all that out of the way, if you want to see more from the channel, remember here's going to be another playlist for something Star Wars related. Go ahead and watch that too. Remember here's going to be a video that YouTube recommends for you as well. And until next time, just stay amazing, everyone. Stay awesome. Stay Star Warsing. And I will see you in the next one. Until then... May the force be with you all.